So I'm going to be a little bit different from what most people do on their channels. When a certain milestone is hit, I think normally it's one million, people have been doing Let's Draw My Life. And maybe I'll still do that, but right now, given recent events for me, I'm going to journalize a synopsis of what my life is like. Maybe when we get to one mil, I'll delete this video and just redo it, or I'll just redo it in general, because who's going to look back to this? That being said, the reason I'm doing this is because I've had so many people accuse me of, well, having this people have accused me of thinking I've had this perfect life I've had this fantasy life that I think I'm living it which is not even remotely true and I know for a fact that I haven't so in this video to have it on record I am going to go through my visual on how my life is laid out. Not every little bit of it, but the points that matter the most. Starting from the beginning. Born in June of 1994. Loud, uh, I was just one of the loudest babies ever. And problem was It wasn't ending. Constant crying. No. Screaming. Why? Because in my... Your guys... It's mine. This is my left, by the way, just so you guys know. Left frontal lobe. Tumor. In fact, in the circumstances, I still have... Scars. I don't know if it's... You see that line? Yeah. Goes all the way across my head. From one side to the other. Hence the hairstyle I have. That being said... I ended up in the hospital. For two years. Because of the circumstance. As we can all tell... I am alive, and the surgery was a success, or surgeries, there were two of them. However, the belated aftermath was what kind of crumbled what could have been in many senses on my life, until a few years ago, but I'll get to that later. At six years old, I had been diagnosed with epilepsy started having seizures, and I was sent to the ER. I was put on some medication to prevent me from having them. And yet, I feel like these medications at first did not really help, because my body wasn't used to them. They have to mix in with the blood, which is a little bit different. Between the ages of six and, great, now I got a math, 20. Between the ages of six and 20, constant seizures, scattered, never knew when they were gonna happen. Caused by anybody who knows how epilepsy works, knows exactly what the causes are. I was very limited, on the physical things, but things that had a lot of this, extremely limited. I wasn't able to do many sports. Not that I cared, I've never been much for sports unless it's swimming, which there was never a problem for that because it didn't involve like me sweating, me putting up too much effort. I could go at my own pace but that is one sport type thing I guess you could say that I liked doing. However, 
the circumstances did destroy my childhood, in my mind. Come middle school and high school, I'd been used to this by now. And I was a very self-centered child to a degree, I will admit that. And my parents were very kind. They did raise me and my two siblings on specific rules, but they weren't stupidly strict. My parents raised us on the idea, for the most part, at least this is from what my observation states, I might be wrong, but what I got off of it was the idea that we learned how to go about things the hard way. Now the hard way can mean many things depending on the circumstance. But I've found for me specifically over the years that that is definitely the way I learn. Anyway. <sighs> During middle school and high school, I had one specific bully. Who because, I, th I don't know if it was out of jealousy or what the reason, but I get taunted by them. Constantly. Now, I was never given, if I was given a nickname, I don't remember it. This was too long ago for me to actually remember that. But I do remember, it was this one kid with two individuals always following him. They were all three, it was three dudes. It got to the point where, in a distant future dream, I dreamed of the guy, and I dreamed of me getting into a fist fight with the guy. Woke up hitting a pillow. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I digress. High school wasn't just that. I've never been much of a school type person. I never liked school. Maybe I liked a couple of the classes. But all in all, school was never really my thing. I acted like it was, I faked it, but I never enjoyed it. I was what you could call the class clown, and it got me into trouble. A lot. <sighs> but I digress. High school years for me were probably one of the most bland. Not just because of that. During middle school and high school years, I never had a single girlfriend. Ever. I went on a date with maybe one woman. And I did go to the dances, but I never danced. I've always felt I've been probably one of the worst at it. Never been good at it. But. It is what it is. Time flies. I get through the hell that I call high school and my parents have us move and by the time they have us move at this point we have already moved nine times including the move that they were having us make at that point in time moves get irritating for me and by that time I was like no like if we do another one I'm no Little did I know the next move was going to be this complex on my own. However, the last few years that I was living with my parents, I had my first two relationships. One of them was long distance, the other was in person. The long distance one ended because I found out the person was cheating on me. I subsided it, which was probably not the best idea in the long run, but I subsided it and, well, moved on. Continued being friends with the person as I looked for another individual to be with. And I eventually found that person. 
someone who was a lot similar to the first person I dated. For those of you who are curious, the first person was when was me dating uh, Silver or Becca long distance. Yeah. At this point, those of you who have seen many videos on the channel know she cheated on me twice in person. So she cheated on me over all three times before I completely gave up. Tristan was the second person notable that I dated who was going through a lot of hardship and wanted to get away from what they were doing, what they were going through. I'm not going to go too much into detail because that is their life story, not mine. In the long haul, the relationship didn't work out. She had to go back to her home state, which is Alabama, and I was moving here to Utah. Two different sides of the country. I did find out one thing, though. When I dated Tristan, I found out that I definitely have a thing for country girls. And apparently I found out that I also have a thing for redheads. Kind of coincidental, ain't it? Given that my fiance's pink fox, redhead, she's country. Should have seen that one coming. But anyway, I digress. The next particular thing. I was living on my own. Things seemed to be going well for me. And I started attending some meetings, some job interviews, stuff like that. You know, just generic weekly things that most people do. However, there was one particular hardship in my life that I was going through consistently. Between now, well, actually, more accurately, between a few months ago and when I first moved here. Constantly. I'd be looking for someone to be with. But every single time I found someone, I was just being used for one thing or another. And it got old. I needed a hiatus. Time for myself. Around this point in time, I met the life adventures of Christian who, over time, I became friends with. At the time, he was one of very few friends I've had. I had, because of the fact that I am in, I'm an introvert if I don't know a person. The person has to approach me or I won't say anything. Once I start talking, that's when I become an extrovert. It's, it's a little bit weird. Eventually, Christian introduced me to Aaron. This, I believe, was about a year and a half to two years ago. I don't remember the exact point in time. Aaron and I saw eye to eye on a lot of things. Same with Christian, but they were, you know, depending on the individual, it was either more or less some things than others. We were all single men. Kind of just hung out together every now and then. Until recently. Christian introduced me to Pink Fox. We slowly started talking. Very slowly. I was single at the time. And Christian was dating a woman who was using him. He didn't know it, but I could, I could definitely tell. She was using him for one thing or another. It was to depend on the circumstance. She was being very manipulative to him. And I knew this because I had experienced that manipulation way too many times on my own. I didn't go too much into detail about this just because it's so sensitive and it would take forever to explain. Maybe when I hit one mil, I might do that. We'll see. But 
I pulled her off Christian. Then I started dating this woman. Was I ever actually dating her in mind? No. I never wanted to date her in the first place. I just didn't want her to hurt somebody who I considered a brother. Now time has passed, things have subsided, that's over, and eventually I became single again because I broke up with her. Because I didn't really want to be with her in the first place, this other girl. Plus, I could notice this girl was starting to use me anyway. Just like the other seven women prior to her. Three of these seven causing me to get very, very, very rash. I'm not going to go into detail about this because it's extremely dark and extremely sensitive, but trust you me, it was not fun. Eventually, Amber and I got closer and closer. She was with somebody else, and I did want, not want to interfere with that. However, I did care about her. Every time I saw Amber hurt, or Amber crying, or getting angry, I would go see if she was okay, comfort her, just trying to be a good friend. Eventually, This, these constant actions of kindness showed her that there was a little bit more there than what she originally thought. Or so I thought. Apparently she already had a crush on me like I did on her when I first met her. Guilty as charged. And this other guy was not treating her well. He was trying to force her to be someone that she was not. Which is just not right. Every time she would hang out with me and Christian and Aaron, she would start to be more of that someone else again. Eventually that did degrade to Christian, her and I, and, it, and at a point it was just Aaron, her and I, at a point it, it was like back and forth, but it eventually it just became her and I hanging out. By the time that happened, she and I were together. This was just a little bit before the video, you, this was before the proposal. Not too long before it, but long enough for me to know that she and I had a future together. The rest of it you guys already know. However, between every now and then, Amber and I have had conflicting situations. Not arguments. We have never gotten angry at each other, but we have had some conflictions where we had to talk things out and work things out. We've never done it out of anger. Because the way both of us see it is this. What's the point? What's the point of getting angry at each other if it's going to take us just to square one again? Neither of us want that. But the confliction on its own, the relationship's not perfect. It's not. Very close to it, though. The reason it's not perfect is that of these conflictions, the bond between her and I, however, that is pretty much on a straight line. Now, the bond itself, most people consider the bond what the relationship is. When I say the relationship, I mean the path our relationship takes. What happens to her? And what happens to me? What we do to resolve things? What we do in our conversations? Yada, 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 yada. There has been confliction, yes. But nothing to the point of hate, nothing to the point of argument, nothing like that. 
And because of this aspect, it triggered so many people to accuse me of having this false mindset of you're living a fairy tale. But as this 20 minute video has shown, I have not. I went through my trials prior to meeting Amber. And she, based off what she told me, it is not my place to talk about it, but it was the same thing for her. She went through her trials prior to meeting me. And somewhat, while she started to meet me, and the conflicts that she and I have approached, yes, there are conflicts, but honestly, it really just depends on how you approach those conflicts. The stereotype of all relationships are supposed to have arguments comes from the idea that when people approach these conflicts, they approach them differently, based off the idea that opposites attract. But that's not always the case. And you know what? I look at it this way. If any of the five people who have accused me of having this fantasy land future that I am faking out of my mind, if any of you five see this, consider this. If what you think is a real relationship has to include an argument, then you live a stereotype. If you think I live a fantasy land, fine. Go ahead, think that. I don't care. At least I'm happy. But I can say this, those who think I do, live a stereotype. Those who think I had a good childhood, lived a stereotype childhood. That's a pattern I've noticed. Those who think someone else lives a perfect life, those who think that live stereotype lives. And these do exist. I've met many people who have lived stereotype lives. I've met people who live the opposing of stereotype lives, which is what this perfect fantasy land life is. It's the opposite of the stereotype. But there is no in between. You either live one or you live the other. I lived a damaging childhood, medically, and to me, that is physically damaging as well. To others, if you don't get beat as a kid, if you don't have a paddle to the back or the arm or whatever, if your parents don't spank you thousands of times, then you live a fantasy childhood. If that's the case, then that's exactly what I lived. Fine. I'll admit it. I don't care. At least my parents cared enough to raise me in a way where they could teach me certain things. Rights from wrongs. Anybody who lived otherwise lived a stereotype. And the same goes for any other point in time in life that I have not mentioned yet. High school, middle school, teens, preteens. All of it, what I've lived, is a trialed life. Life filled with trials, but a life that does not consist of me being a stereotype. Because relying on the ideas that stereotypes present destroy a mindset in my mind. But that's my opinion. These are my thoughts. Maybe you're different. Maybe you're the same. I don't know. The reason I talk about the, this in conclusion is this. It bothers me when other people accuse me of having this pristine, perfect life when nobody has those. 
I don't believe I've had a perfect life. I know the arguments I've had with certain individuals. I do not talk about it outside of these individuals because it is extremely private. Those who have, those five individuals who have accused me of having this mentally, I mean, they accuse me of thinking that I've had this fantasy life, that I believe my life is this fantasy life. You're wrong. Anybody who knows me knows this is true. But you have to know me well enough to know this. And you have to stop living under the ideas of stereotypes. But that's all I'm going to say about this. What did you guys think about what I had to say? Let me know in the comments below. I had to vent, but there you go. I don't live a stereotype. I live a fantasy type, apparently. I am very tempted to use those two terms from now on when it comes to lives, but we'll see. You guys now know some of the crap that I've gone through in my life. Not all of it, but quite a bit of it. Quite a bit that covers up the crap that I have to deal with in my past. that the current has definitely made up for. But still, the current has conflict too. So let me know in the comments below. Anything you want me to talk about when it comes to my own life? Because I gave a very, very small, short summary of what was going on. Anything about me you want me to talk about? Or any discussion or rants that you'd like me to talk about? Let me know down there. But again, if you like this video, make sure to push that like button, and so far you can't sit anymore. And if you really like to consider subscribing to the channel, this is the longest live video I've ever done. So for those of you who sat through the whole thing, thank you. It gets aggravating to me when I have to talk about stuff like this, but sometimes it needs to be discussed. Want to check out more live stuff that I've done prior to this, though? And I can guarantee, so far... All of them are shorter than this one. Click the links on the side of my head or the channel link itself, whether under my head or in the description below. Well, I guess it's under my head one way or the other. Anyway, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for sticking around for this entire video, guys, and I hope to see all of you in another one. Bye for now.